had a lot of um, answers this week. Uh, one of the things that we want to do uh, from now on, as much as possible, um, I know that most of you don't know each other, but um, if I meet you in the field, we usually, well, most people, I think actually all, uh, we don't do Bible study at all in the field. Some of you guys do, but most of you don't. That meet me. We just form. Form concerning about your life, form concerning about uh, your worries and your problems, and we look back at today's word or Sunday's word, and you'll find out that every single time that I met you, um, there's always the answer or something greater, right? That's waiting to happen. But you just gotta look for it. And it's not just looking at backwards, but looking at forwards. So I know that all of you have problems, but you cannot have as much problem as the Church of Corinth. Church of Corinth was Las Vegas, LA, New York, all combined. That means money, they had. Poverty, they had. Crime, they had. Everything they had. Idolatry, they had. So it was all multi-ethnic. By the way, hundreds of years back, when before th this was written, Corinth was actually destroyed. And so, if you understand how important Corinth is, and yet it keeps on facing disasters, and yet it has one of the most important, you know, temples and the port city, and it's the most important area. It's like in the center, right? It's just below Athens, and right across the sea is Ephesus. So I know it's kind of hard to imagine this, but just imagine this. It's a very, 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 very important, like almost a peninsula area, tiny little area, port area. It's like Korea. Korea is so important. You guys don't know how important Korea is, right? But Korea is so cursed. Right? Korea, they stressed out their students. Learn English. Nobody can speak English very well. <laughs> I can see his head. <laughs> Yes, it's true, it's true. <laughs> but most Koreans are not illiterate. They all can read, write, and they're good in math. If you take Koreans away from Korea, we're not good in math and science. Strange, I'm not good in math and science. But one thing that happened is this. Korea is not supposed to be this powerful, right? It's divided, and we're still in war. My relatives from my mother's side is still in North Korea. I don't know who they are. Only my grandmother, my mother, and my aunt, right? My emo, they came down, and my grandmother had nothing. She had nothing, but she really believed God and prayed, and she made all the money to support me and my family. And so we're actually well off because of my grandmother. She's still alive, very old, but that's because Something happened that made South Korea really powerful, not North Korea. What's South Korea really powerful for? Because of one thing, nothing they did. They only received what blessing? Real good missionaries came and set up schools, translated the Bible to Korean, and set up hospitals. Why? Nothing was working. People were dying. One of the greetings of Korea was what? Did you eat? I was like, always confused and I had to answer them. I, I used to think that way. Should I say that? Or should I, yes I ate. How about you? <laughs> right? It's a very strange you know, greeting, right? Did you eat? But you need to know the history. Or even the 안녕하세요. Hello. Are you at peace? Because there was no peace. Then, think about Corinth. You know what they used to say? If you go to Corinth, it's all about idolatry, sex, money. If you want Genesis 3, 6, 11, and Acts 13, 16, 19, and all the destruction of an individual, where should you go? Corinth. So that's why Paul wrote two letters. Actually, there should be more. But there's actually two in the Bible, right? What was it about? It's about him writing to solve problems. Him being a pastor. Most time, Paul is a missionary. But for the letters of Corinth, the first and second, 
He's a pastor. He wants to make sure that everybody stays in what? In the body of Christ correctly. And grow inside of Christ. And how does he do it? He scolds people in the beginning, right? He scolds in the first Corinthians. But second Corinthians, he doesn't. He actually renews them and reconciles them, fixes them. How? Through the gospel. It's very simple. And this is how easy it is. As much as Paul keeps on growing Christ, he stopped being legalistic. He stopped being so hard-headed. You know what he was? He was just filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? He was harsh sometimes. He's very smart. He's very strong. But from now on, after 2 Corinthians, he just kept being led by God. To do what? Embrace everyone and save everyone. Even those that are doing so many bad things. We just had communion, right? You know, in Corinthians, you know, it has a part of communion also. But you know how they were taking communion in the church of Corinth? They were stuffing themselves and drinking, getting drunk. Right? It's like, you know, if you ever see, I, I was doing the bread, right? And somebody's really hungry. And the kids, little kids, I understand. Little kids, oh, my shiketa is so good. Oh, right? They're like, you know, and like the mom's like, hey, <laughs> it's holy. It's Jesus' body. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? But then they're, they were doing that. They're just going, oh, it's so good. Come on, you can have another one. But Jesus is so tasty. Right? <laughs> Jesus, man, Jesus' blood, the best. Right? They were doing that too much. They were getting drunk and they were getting full. So they lost the meaning of the gospel. But that's what it means to live in this world right now. Because right now we're living in corn. It's going to be destroyed. Um, one of our old members is going to um, Europe, England. I'm kind of scared for her. Why? Because um, like, like America, they have a lot of professionals, but they're hiding. They're hiding their problems. Like suddenly this co-pilot, suddenly he just felt like, hey, pilot, get out. And then this is what the news says. He locks the door from the cockpit and hits the mountain in front of him. Which actually, it was really high, the plane. But he went down and crashes into the mountain purposely. And this is the age of disasters. And of course they say, yeah, he, he wasn't fit to fly. Oh, if he wasn't fit to fly, he shouldn't have fly, flown. He should have been cut as a pilot. But still they let him. So we don't know who is going to cause another accident. We don't know how many wars right now are happening. Do you know how many? There's civil wars. There's people fighting with each other. There's all this problem. In Africa itself, wow, there's too many. There's so much disasters. But America has more disasters. Right? There's too many disasters. In Korea, there's too many disasters, right? Just like the ferry accident. It was an accident about to happen any time. But right now, those accidents are continuing. Even now, it's getting worse and worse. What's the only thing that can solve it? More technology? More law? There's nothing that can solve it. That's why you have to understand this. What's the real problem? Why can't we solve mental problems? Why can't you solve family problems? Why can't you solve your future problems? Some of you are going to school here and you're not even um, good in Korean. You have to you know, study hard and you have to work here. You're getting married to a Korean person and you're actually an American person. And there's all these different issues. I have, um, some of you actually saw this. I have a very good little sister. Um, she doesn't believe very well now. I'm still praying for her. But when you look at her cacao pictures, and she changes it so often, all her pictures, wow. She's really pretty. And her husband, which is a European person, wow, so handsome. And when they go, and they have money, but she wants more money. When they go, they eat the best food. Like, wow, they're so happy. But she can't fake it on me. So I said, how are you? And she goes, I hate my marriage. And she just got married. <laughs> I can't stand my husband. And then she runs away sometimes from home. To do what? 
to drink because she's so stressed. There was the hope for her. Of course, that problem, I said, ah, that's not a problem. You have to understand why he's that way. And it's from long ages past. It's a long time ago he had that problem. And so one day, and she, she's, um, she's actually going to come back today. But as soon as she comes back, she'll probably text me too, and I'll text her. And it's, it's very easy to meet her because um, I'm the only person not the only person, but I'm the very close pastor, like an older brother to her, that she opens up very easily. Because I saw her grow, I helped her grow. But of course she's down. When she's down, what's the answer then? You know, um, I did a morning worship today. I didn't sleep last night. So my first worship, I know what the title is, I read the scripture before it, but I couldn't listen to the message because and Pastor Brett was right beside me. I don't know what I wrote. I had chicken scratch. Like, oh gosh. Now, even now I'm sleepy. But even before I was praying, God, today morning worship is so important. EM service is so important. First service is so important. We have communion. And then I have to lead praise also. I was preparing everything all night long and taking a nap. But I'm getting old, so <coughs> that nap doesn't work on me. I actually have to sleep at least four hours or three hours. I only slept one hour. So oh, I'm dying. God, oh, you really need to help me. But what's imprinted in me? Not strength. Not God's word. But then I'll pray, God, why did I read this today? Last night. Why did I read these things about this message, about Corinth, about you know, and I listened to I listen I think five messages yesterday, just to prepare today, just for myself. It's like and I receive a lot of grace. But I still couldn't organize everything. I thought, what's wrong with me? I usually have a message really easily. That easy, it's so easy to come out because it's with me. But I noticed something. I'm really tired. It affects my spiritual state. Right? And my answers come, but I don't realize that was an answer. But here's something that happened to me. I'm okay. I'm tired. And the message, I'm losing hold of it. But it's not okay, but it's okay. Why? Because I go back. I actually check the message more than you guys. Why? Because that's how I live. Why is it because I'm a pastor? No. But because I don't receive any answers without having that word. Right? That's how I do my schedule prayer. And I was checking in praise and hymns. I was thinking, wow, this, oh, I didn't know it was a story. I was like, all the songs that we sang in the first worship is what I sang in the morning. And I never saw the um, church bulletin. It's not some kind of mystical thing. But I actually explained to them what happened, why I chose those songs. It was mostly Fanny Crosby and Isaac Watts, you know, at the cross. But then I said this, Fanny Crosby, when did she actually change? She went to a conference, she was singing the same song that Isaac Watt from England wrote. At the cross, at the cross, right? You know, man, wang, and wang, that song? That song is the reason, one of the reasons, Fanny Crosby changed. She was having such a hard time, and she heard the message, but the message wasn't going in. When did it go in? That song also says, that it kind of says, you know, she opened my eyes, right? But then she's blind. She cannot see. But what happened? She was able to see God's word. Because it was already inside of her, but it wasn't rooted. It wasn't inside of her nature. What happened? She personally accepted what was given to her by her mom and her grandmother. Because it was not hers. What did she personally accept? Christ. That's the beginning of all answers. What is Christ? Who is Christ? Here, I'm going to explain something very simple. Christ is this. This is Chinese character for king. But Christ is actually king, right? But it has a really good meaning. Because of this. This is supposed to mean heaven. This is supposed to be earth. And this is the mediator. The in-between person. Is that Christ? He came to become the mediator, 
the in-between person because we cannot be the in-between person. We're here. On earth. What's on earth? It's cursed. Disasters. You know why you have problems? You know why you have a worry about future? Because Genesis 3, 6, 11, Acts. The culture itself is just dark. You know, go get a fortune teller, fortune teller, you know, to tell your fortune. You'll be blessed. Right? Go live inside of this astronomical, you know, future. You know, you can predict your life. You can receive power from the universe. That's all the culture right now. You yourself can be God. Technology also can be God. Right? Isn't that all the movies? You can change your own future and your fate. But that's not true. Then the individual, where do they go? They die here. Right? They actually die. They die. Everybody's dying. It's death. Knowing that, God sends who? Christ. To do what? To take away death. And to do what? To rise again so that we can meet God. But, did we meet God? Yes and no. Because you're not dead. And you're not sure. Because He's invisible. His Spirit. So now you're asking, why am I suffering so much? Because you're in between. You're not... Well, you're living on earth, and you're a citizen of heaven, and yet you're confused. Sometimes if you... Actually, I used to be this way. Pastor Sam, Pastor Brett... I don't know about Pastor Brett, but Pastor Sam... Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did this, because I know his stories too. If we go to fortune tellers, the first time we went, the real ones, we get freaked out. <gasps> like, you know, they're started looking funny. It's like, hoo, wee, hoo, like making three noises, like, making funny faces. Like, why are you here? It's like, it's kind of demonic sometimes. Very dark. Right? It can be really scary. I'm scared. I don't know about Pastor uh, Sam, but I'm scared because, wow, she's really, it's usually a woman. She's really freaky. Scary person. And she doesn't want to tell our fortunes because she's a real one. Why are you here? Right? Oh, we want to get our fortunes told. We have money. Right? It doesn't work. It's just very scary. She's uncomfortable. We're uncomfortable. And then eventually we get kicked out. That's what happened. It's like, was that evangelism? I don't know what happened. It was just very uncomfortable. I don't want to do that again. That's why I, I told one of the missionaries, because the missionary on the first level camp train took me there. And she was so strange. Did somebody accept Christ? No. I thought, oh, this is just, this training is strange. I don't want to do that again. But then, the next time I went to a fortune teller, the real one, I felt really sorry. Sometimes it kind of freaked me up because, you know, if I'm shaking, oh, but it's children. Oh, they're really messed up. Most of them, there's something wrong. Mentally, physically. And if you really look at their lives very carefully, it's totally disasters. Then, what's this then? They're trying, trying, but nothing's working. That's why God gave us Christ. To change what? Our entire life and world. Why? Heaven and earth and what we are now is changed. We're new creatures. We're a new creation. But let me tell you what it means then. Remember Genesis? Genesis 1, 27 to 28. Actually, this is Christ. This is the gospel. How is this the gospel? Very simple, because we're created after God's image and spiritual. We talk to God. We walk with God. He was with us. We're after His own image. That means God is not physical. It's the image where we have everything with God. And He gave us the blessing to conquer and rule, right? Multiply. That's the blessing. But how do you know this is a prophet, priest, and king? King is easy. Conquer, rule, reign, right? 28. King. And to be able to be free 
and to talk to God, of course, as prophet and priest too, and to praise, be thankful. But you can actually tell in detail in Genesis 2, 17, don't eat of this tree or else you die. Right? You guys remember that? But then, did God create Eve? <coughs> no, not yet. So what's Adam's job? His job is to relay the word. Was he a good relayer of the word? No, he's a terrible relayer of the word. That's why Eve easily fell into what temptation? The lies of Genesis 3. Do you know why I know that Adam was there? If you read very carefully in Genesis 3, when Eve took it, it seems like Adam was very far away, right? But keep on reading. And then it says, And the, she gave the fruit to the man who was with her. That means he was a quiet guy. This, so like the woman was talking, and she, he was like, <laughs> he was, he was, Can you imagine? He's, it's like, so married people, try not to do that. If a snake talks to your wife, don't let her, <laughs> right? Step on the snake. <laughs> that means all our problems because we did not enjoy the blessing of the gospel in the beginning. Right? You understand that, right? And once you don't enjoy the blessing of the gospel, do you know what you need? You need evangelism. So, what am I saying? God is the God of the gospel. He never changed. Christ is always there. He's the light that takes away darkness, chaos, and void. Right? So if you have a problem, you have a fundamental problem. No problem. He solves that. You have a spiritual problem. No problem. You have darkness, chaos, and void. No problem. You have Satan bothering you, and Satan's bothering you mentally, giving you stress. No problem. Satan's bothering you physically. No problem. Oh, I'm getting old. Oh, my body, I'm sick. Or oh, my parents are stressing me out. I have to get married. No problem. Oh, I have to get a job. No problem. Even your talent and your finances are inside of the blessing of Christ. Right? And what about my relationships? Right? Even your children, even the people, younger and older, side, whatever, they're all going to, even non-believers are blessed by you. Why? It's here. That means this. Authority, life, and power on earth and in heaven. And this is, just means this. All authority. You stand in between for what? Not to be... Um, I, I think I told you this a long time ago. I think I did it in um, Philippines. I don't think I did it here. I think I did it here one time. Long time ago in Hawaii, I used to have a printer. You know, back then it was expensive. Those, those kind of like, um, it was a laser. You kind of can tell how it goes. This is, this is, this is. Those kind of old printers. But I really liked my printer. It was my printer, and I, I used to work in an office in Hawaii, in the church, and I used to print out all the drawings and my flyers, and I used to serve the church really well. My printer was my best friend for you know like I'm serving. I was like, one day, I smell something funny. And the printer wasn't working. And I was like, oh no, my printer's broken. Something happened that made my printer smell. And if you're from Hawaii, you know this creature. It's called a gecko. A little gecko, a lizard. It's like, went inside and liked it because it's warm. But he did something which nobody should do. And even humans shouldn't do. You shouldn't go negative and positive and touch it. So he touched one area where it's charged with electricity, negative. He touched another, which was positive. And guess what? He became gecko, burnt gecko, fried gecko. I was like, what's that smell? It didn't smell like ojingo or anything, like you know, octopus or anything. It's like, gecko? <laughs> and my printer, yeah, it was gone. But what happened? We think that this is bad. How can we be connected to God and the world? We're going to get pulled. We can't serve the world and God at the same time. Even the Bible says that. 
we're not serving the world that way. We're not following the world. We're actually saving the world. Why? Because Jesus came down. And we're up now. But you know what we're doing? We're always throwing a lifeline down. To do what? Bring people up. Do what? Where is this the middle? The middle is who? It's Christ. Right? In Christ, you're a new creation. That means, you know what he did? This word actually is the most important word that you should learn. There's always this prototype, right? Whenever you see proto, it's first. First, like the prototype. First, and then you got this EV. And actually it's EU, always. It just means good, like eulogy, right? But then look at this word. Don't look at the EM. Don't worry, it's just the ending. Look at that. What's that angel? It just means message or messenger. But you know what that means? This word combined is this Genesis 3.15 you know who evangelized to us first it was always God and you know what this evangelism is it's always Christ so why does he say the one who's asking we're going to crush the head of the serpent what did he do to us he gave us a message to destroy us what is it you yourself can be God. That means, you know why it's not working? Because it's you. Because you're separate from God. You and your homework. You and your future. You and your family. You and your boyfriend, girlfriend, marriage. Everything. You and your culture. Everything is separate from God. Then, if you're separate from God, what is it? Is death. That's why. Why did God say, I'm going to send the woman's offspring and he's going to crush the head of the serpent? That means all that power, all the authority is gone. Do you know why? Satan doesn't die. But that power, while you live on earth, that power of you being by yourself is gone. You're no longer by yourself. It's not you centered. You restored what? Christ. And you know what happens when you restore Christ? Every blessing gets restored. In heaven, earth, right? All blessings. Because you're in Christ. Christ, I know that we do this. If you want to accept Christ, then open up your heart and accept Him. Bring him into your heart. But think about it. Is Christ a person to bring inside your heart? Is he that small? Because our heart is small, right? So we're actually inviting him personally to accept him. It does make sense. But guess what? Christ is bigger than what you think. Right? Do you know why? It says this if you read very carefully. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. The God of this age has blinded all the non-believers so that they cannot see the glory of God, which is Christ, the image of God. That means, what is Satan doing around the world? He's making us not see only one thing, Christ. Why? That's the answer for the entire life. Your entire world is only Christ. And if that happens, guess what happens? The kingdom of God comes down. And on earth, guess what? The Holy Spirit keeps on filling you. Even though this world is messed up, you always receive guidance and the works of the Holy Spirit. Um, the problem here, here is very simple. It's us again. What is it? We're imprinted with what? And we're rooted already. We're rooted in Genesis 3. Genesis 6 and 11. We're rooted. We're going to look at physical things. But guess what? Physical things don't last. It won't. 
when we actually supposed to look at the things that are invisible, the unseen, we're supposed to live by faith. That's what 2 Corinthians 4 and 5 says that. That means we grab hold of the eternal things. Like, you know, we have a chocolatier here. She makes really good chocolate. And once you eat it, oh, so good. Guess what? You have to eat it again. Right? And if you leave it a long time, that chocolate will not taste good. Same thing for coffee. Coffee, you're supposed to roast it really fast, be fresh, roast it, and then drink it. It smells really good. It tastes very sweet also. But you guys got to know, we have an expiration date. Nothing lasts here. And yet, we're trying to make it last. Why? Because it's Genesis 6. We're very physically oriented. And we think of all things, all sorts of bad things physically. And we want to succeed and make our names great to go higher than God. That's Genesis 11. That there's no way out of it. Then what's the key to change everything to receive healing? It's the same thing. Be imprinted. And eventually, if you're imprinted with the word, prayer, and evangelism, then you're rooted in word, prayer, and evangelism. I don't know why people don't receive healing in America because they don't get rooted and imprinted and they don't live inside of the blessings of the gospel um, I have a very good um, conversation with a lot of you guys but one of you I met a um, long time ago and he still remembers this I know he does but once I met him I shared the word of that day to him and then he Later on, he says, can you send me that verse again? And that verse was tied to his problem. And it was concerning healing too. But that verse actually says, pretty much this is a short version. You're going to be healed real fast. But every time that I, I think about him, I pray for him, and he just sticks around too. He's supposed to just go home or somewhere, or do something else. But whenever I talk to him, I know God has a plan for that person. Why? Because when I share, oh, Sunday's message is actually his answer. I listen to everything he says and then I share what I think is the answer because that's how God leads. And then he just says this, you're right. And then we become at peace. Why? Because God is in control again. There's no more problem. And healing arises. Why? Because who worked? It was God's word. How hard is that? And so you know what the key of our life is? It's three todays. Do you know why? Because God gives His Word, which is eternal. It's not about, you know, do's and don'ts. It's not legalism or mysticism. It's the gospel. Right? It's the covenant. So if God gives His Word, it's going to work, and it's going to eternally work. It's just... We disbelieve. That's why it's not working. Then, how does this word work? And how can we grab hold of it? That's why we pray. In whose name? In Christ. Because He solved it all. And if you pray with the word, guess what? And you go out holding and praying with the word, guess who works? The Holy Spirit works and Evangelism is not the right thing that you think about. You're actually thinking wrong, because I know, because I used to think this way too. It's not making people Christians. Some of you went to, actually she, she just left. I'm going to talk about her. And actually one of you also went there. Actually several of you went there with me. We go to Subway. It's kind of far, but it's in Garden 5. There's a Subway there. And every time I take um, some of you to um, go to Subway, I actually, I always pray for the people everywhere. So I'm thinking, Subway, yes, evangelism time too. So I'm praying, 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 and then eventually we leave. We leave very happy also. We th give thanks for the lady because she gives a lot of vegetables. And one of you don't like vegetables, so I say, add his vegetable to my vegetable. And it's like, wow, thank you. And then we leave very happy and I give that person the evangelism track. And then I go back with a different person. And then, guess what? Oh, you're that person. You're the person with the other person. I'm like, oh, but there's a new person. I'm like, yes. <laughs> right? 
And, and she figured that I'm a pastor too. And she says this, I read it. And it was really good. Evangelism hard? I don't think so. Evangelism is very peaceful. And when you listen to that person, what you're holding on to, Sunday's message, after this message, oh, that person needs what I'm holding. And actually, you're praying for that person, then God does the work. And what is this? You become a good messenger to let God work, which is the Holy Spirit. So if this is the Father, this is the Son, this is the Holy Spirit. And they never leave us. So, what do you have to do? Just do 24. What is 24? Just be happy. Just be happy with that. Right? Just be happy with the Word. Because the Word is not to make you pressured. It's to actually give you answers and strength. Right? It's to actually heal you. But it's not just for you. It's to heal others too. Then, what do you do? Ask God. Will you work 24 hours on my life? Then, God gives you this. He answers. And His answer is always 25 because it's beyond us. We didn't even think about it. We were just thinking about that person with the word. And guess what? God sends His angel. God breaks down the force of darkness. God opens that person's heart. And strangely, we become very close. And guess what? That person accepts Christ. And guess what happens? That answer becomes eternal. And it's always tied to what? The Word. So, is it hard to do ministry? Not anymore for me. I kind of look backwards a lot still. But yet, I try to look forwards. Because it's easier that way. Or even now. Why am I saying this? Because you're not the old person that you are. If you really accept the Christ, and the only reason why I can say this, if you really accept Christ, you're not an old person anymore. You're new, able to do this. But if you cannot do this, there's only one reason, because you did not understand Christ correctly. If you don't understand Christ, you cannot receive this answer. And so, where do you start? God, you brought me here to Korea. You brought me to this church to do what? First things first. Fundamentally, know who Jesus is and be united with Him. And if you're united with Him, it's finished. You can hear the Word. You can pray the prayer. You can save your life and your field. Selling chocolate? I'm going to save people with chocolates. Right? With your musical instruments. With your bodybuilding. Right? With your handsome looks. Right? That's Deacon Jacob. <laughs> right? With everything that you do, with your studies, you save it. Why? You're connected to heaven. And you save earth. Why? Earth needs saving. Because it needs the Christ that's inside of you. But actually, you're inside of Christ. The greatest word that Paul always uses, and this is the end, okay? I actually didn't even share everything. The greatest word that Paul uses is in the Lord. How do you solve all your problems? In the Lord. How do you do evangelism? In the Lord. In Christ, right? So, where are we? Christ is not in us. We're in the Lord. And when you meet each other now, how are you meeting? In the Lord, right? That means all the force of darkness breaks, all the freedom, all the healing, all the connection to God's word. And you realize, wow, it was a blessing of meeting. Because it was in the Lord. Even if it was a bad guy, even if it was an unbeliever, it doesn't matter. But if it's a believer, wow, it's even greater. It's like a miracle of miracles in the Lord. So, greet each other, really, in the Lord. Because you are a miracle being here. Like, one of you I met, like, just, like... I know that person, but I really didn't sit down and talk. But when we sat down, it was so good. Right? It was so good. I would spend all my money just to spend time with her because that, you know, and she's so young and yet 
we just always click with the word prayer and evangelism. I was like, oh, and she like always wants to help me. And I say, no, thank you, because I don't want you to, I don't want people to get burdened. But it's so good, right? That's the meeting that you have. It's so good that eventually you want to talk to other people too, because it's so good. And so even the bad people, there's reason why they're bad, because they don't have this. And so you become the greatest blessing for them. Right? You become so good for them. But you don't have money. Don't worry. You meet other people with no money, but then God will take care of you. What was Sunday's message? The Lord is my shepherd. And then when you have money, it was all God's grace. <laughs> What's today? It's the meeting. The blessing of meeting spiritually. Jonathan and David. I was awake enough to hear that, right? And you know why other people are suffering? Because his dad was spiritually kind of afflicted with the force of darkness. But David saw it. <coughs> he understood it and he prayed for him. So we can understand other people and help other people too. And save even. You know, Saul's family got even saved because of David. Right? Nothing is a problem then. Do you have a problem? Talk to me. Or talk to Pastor. Pastor Sam first. Pastor Brent has a lot of time. <laughs> then me. <laughs> But nothing's a problem in Christ. Amen? Amen? Because if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Actually, he's a new creature. What kind of creature? This. You are like a king. You are a royal priesthood to declare his wonderful light. Right? First Peter 2 9. So don't worry. Let Christ rule over your entire life and field. And yeah, I sometimes worry about yeah because you know when we start worship it's like ten, and then suddenly as worship continues fifteen, and then when the messenger comes out thirty, <laughs> I'm like strange meeting, <laughs> and then nothing works. There's really you know cameras not working, the chairs are not set up, but it doesn't matter. I don't get stressed anymore. Strangely, I still want it to run smoothly, but you guys will rise up to give answers and save others. That's all I'm dreaming of. You guys will be the main figures to save all the fields that you are in. And that's where you're supposed to be. That's the greatest blessing. Whether you're in the elite field, whether you're in education, whether you're in whatever field. Kickboxing or bow tie or bow tie or whatever. You know, bow ties were there. Right? <laughs> no problem. You can save every field. Amen? Let's pray together and really enjoy the blessing and the mystery that God has given to us, which is Christ and only Christ. Let's really fundamentally enjoy that and make a team with Him, but also make a team inside of Christ with each other and really have a true form that will arise um, for the rest of our lives and for the rest of our days too in the field as a witness. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for this time, for this message. And I also truly enjoy uh, you being the Lord in Christ, uh, you being the one that's always uh, leading us because without you, we have no life and power. May your blessing truly be upon us. Let me pray, God, thank you so much that you allow us to hear this message. May this message truly uh, renew us because we need this uh, true answer and restoration fundamentally. Help us to truly understand and enjoy the gospel correctly and make a conclusion and answer instead of only Christ so that we can enjoy the life of the evangelist correctly and the three todays, which is our three todays, your word, prayer, evangelism, which is ours. Thank you so much for giving all the works and answers that you prepare ahead of time. Help us grab hold of the word. And as we grab hold of the word, I know right now your Holy Spirit, your angels are working and saving the field and opening the doors too. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.